And hello, and welcome back to Xenoblade Chronicles. Like I said last time, I want to do some of the time attack stuff before really um, properly moving on and stuff like that. Uh, before that, I have a couple things to note. Because it really feels like we're coming near a climax, doesn't it? Uh, apparently, the uh, people had told me way back when that at points certain areas would be cut off. Uh, and apparently Sword Valley and Galhead Fortress are completely I can't go to. I didn't even notice that on my own. I didn't try to go to them. Uh, so, yeah, it really does feel like a climax is coming up. There might be like five more climaxes. But I guess I'm sort of in the frame of mind that if I can, I think I'm going to try to finish the main game this long, relatively long weekend I have at the moment. Right now, for perspective, episode 20... Five went up. <laughs> Four, the one, the one with Shulk and Ryan being compared as to who's hotter. Uh, Team Shulk, by the way. Uh, da, 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 da. Other people, other things that were of note. That two-person quest that I did, where he was like choosing his love interest. Apparently, I did make a choice there, and I didn't notice it. Apparently, the actual quest like description was like choose this or this, and it's like because the previous step before that was I went and talked to both of them. I didn't even think about that possibility of it being different. I was just trying to get the information, and apparently, I chose the the the, the Melia equivalent in that quest, basically just accidentally. So th that's sort of uh, uh, another thing. I was asked, what do I think of the music in the game? Um, I think I've expressed some positive feelings about it before, but I like it a lot. There are definitely aspects of it that really remind me of Trails, which I love that game series, so... Uh, I, I love that game's music, so it, it, it's, uh, it, it's really a... It's a positive... It, it's a compliment, basically. Uh, I'd say probably the best way to express what if I'm liking the music or not for something is I have a tendency while I'm doing other stuff to put on uh, YouTube's mix option or like you listen to some music maybe you search some of it out and then it gives you just like a mix of various uh, music that you've done and you just sort of leave it on in the background so there's been music that I had not heard before in the game uh, that I had heard through that without like looking at titles or anything they just were, they were just like in the background and stuff like that uh, just like playing throughout it and such uh, that I ended up recognizing, just like, that sounds familiar. No, I probably heard it through that. And, and, and like, I didn't remember actually hearing it in the game before and stuff like that. Uh, but the games that are currently, like, their soundtracks are just, like, on that list because I just listened to them enough. Uh, Trail Series music. Fire Emblem Three Houses, I quite like that soundtrack too. This game. And a couple soundtracks from an anime movie called Promare that me and my friends have watched recently. There's a couple, there's a, uh, a couple tracks in that that I like quite a bit. And those are the main things I've been listening to in the background for the past several weeks now, basically. <laughs> I like game music. Okay, I want to try these. What friends feel like tackling today? I don't know. I've never tried these. Free and restricted battles. Battle with a party of your choice. Some main menus. Okay, restricted. Fix with a fixed battle uh, party. Interesting. Ah, uh, okay. I guess let's just move our way up. Hmm. Clear time. Okay. First small Start. test for so-called starters. So-called starters. Y you mocking me for doing the lowest level one when I'm like level 60 or something? Because I'm trying this for the first time. Uh, oh, you want me to give up, game? Oh, Alrighty. thanks. Time to rumble! <laughs> Don't get careless. I will give my all. Is that everything? Oh, no, everything in the area. Got it. This isn't, this isn't, 
This is definitely not going to be the fastest group. I don't think many of my strategies are just like speed, 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 strategically. Let us remain vigilant. Well, that 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 was the thing. Is that good? <laughs> I don't know. Is it relative to my level? Rankings and rewards. Your overall rank is determined on your clear time plus bonuses earned. Special one-time rewards will be awarded. The first time your overall rank meets the minimum rank needed for that reward. The higher your rank is, the more no pun stone you'll earn. I'm not surprised. Superb! Arch Sage thrilled beyond words! Oh, you get bonuses for. I, I don't need those, though. That's the Here thing. Is a little something. Yeah. Curious. Ooh, is that all, like, unique to Shulk, maybe? Resort style. <laughs> Are these gonna be swimsuits? Oh, they're basically gonna be swimsuits. They are. Oh, is that good or bad? But that's soon. Where do I get the other ones? Interesting. <laughs> Flippers. Oh. I typically, I, I, I typically like aesthetics that you can take a bit more seriously. Waiting. Let us hurry onwards. Victory to Ricky! Okay. Simple enough. I'm more interested in the aesthetics at this point. <laughs> is new Here is little something. Okay. Oh, this is for Shala. Result style. Oh, that's a that's not a swimsuit. That's pirate. Ooh, I I can see that working. I can see that working in like a serious sense too, like in uh, like a setup for her. Greetings. So tired. Ricky like fighting easy monster. <laughs> Ricky's always quick to point out that I'm fighting easy monsters. Mm -hmm. Super Here is little something. Okay, what do we get? A bunch. So it seems like they're probably per character is essentially what I'm getting. Debonair. He has a set named Debonair. Oh, he has glasses. That doesn't really go with the glasses, but okay. One of the... Actually, was that a watch? It was. It was a fancy watch. Yeah, this is more... I guess this is more Debonair at a... At a resort. Yeah, I get the resort part of it. Yeah, okay. I am curious what uh, is little something. What what the actual cutoff for stuff like that is. Yeah, we're going in order of we got uh when we got them. Resorting. Of course the headband, you like your headbands? Hmm. Very Japanese. Oh uh, yeah. One of those. With shorts. <laughs> Short shorts. And flip flops, okay. Okay, I see your strength is the genuine article. Ricky, like fighting easy. So chain attacks uh, contribute to the time without slowing anything down. So that's a thing that extends the time considerably. Superb! Arch Sage thrilled beyond what. Here is little something. Yeah, uh, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. I assume that is for Melia, and that seems to be a theme where the female characters are just getting. Uh, legs and feet. Oh, that fits her quite well. That actually would fit her. How I currently have her quite well, too. Wouldn't it? Hmm. Extremely well, even. Let's just keep that how it is. Sure. Good going. But we cannot be reckless. Not bad! Not bad! Okay, so that's still an S. I'm wondering what the realistic, what the realistic yeah! cutoff Here's times. Something. I wonder what the realistic cutoff times for not getting an S really are. 
Oh, and that's for, um, Fiora. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's, um... You know what? Someone mentioned water calling in the comments when... In, in regards to some of the, uh... Discussions that, uh... The limbs had been replaced. And I guess this is the point they're making. That there's... At least those patterns on her legs that make them look like they're robotic and made to look synthetic rather than... Uh, what I was talking about previously, where I was thinking, like, the joints were the, uh, uh, thing that defined if they were, uh, real or not, basically. I guess, I, I can get that. I guess we'll see, though. I, if they ever actually answer that properly. Without, uh, speculation. Time to rumble! <laughs> the wind! You're being pretty good. Viola has fun. Ricky wants fun, too! Oh, look, we have, uh, a named enemy as part of this. That sort of had like a weird slowdown. Wait! Oh god! Okay, one of these. Uh, I am not prepared for this. I am not prepared for this. I am not prepared for this. I guess let's. Focus on the other ones. Oh god, of course there's the purge one in here. I need to set up spike stuff if I want to do things that way. <laughs> I really, 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 really do. Okay. It's over. Let's keep on going like this, guys. Right, let's keep going. That's enough! Ah! Now! Ah! 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 I feel stronger. Ah! Double win! Ah! Alright, okay. Oh! Here we go! Take this! Meet her! Ah! My turn! Shana, you're up next! I'm on it. We're not finished yet. Okay, my turn. Yeah! It's not over yet. Alrighty! That was great, guys. Anytime, any place. Uh, we can definitely do this. No escape. Uh, my rifle's getting uh, oh, oh, I'm I'm not done. Done. No way. Take oh, it. How's that? Shoot. That was a beauty. Let's do this. Okay, Should is that okay S? If we fight like this. <laughs> I felt like that went okay. Four minutes is 
on the higher side compared to some of my other stuff, though. It's an S. Fantastic. I just had to actually set. Thrilled beyond words. Oh, you know. Well, thanks. Here is little something. Great. <laughs> okay, what do these look like? Looks like I basically because I got one of those already for the previous one. It's sort of redundant, even. I don't actually know. That's a different. Oh, that's a different color. Okay. Pink instead. Interesting. Water cowling. Is that basically the swimsuit cowling? <laughs> Is that the implication? Yeah, it might be. I can sort of see it. <laughs> it's even just like a, a visor you might bring out to just like a beach. Uh, okay, okay. That's the last one I've unlocked at the moment, at least. I've been waiting. So these are exactly the same, maybe? Uh, are these just... Uh, they do have... different ones. I wonder if they're just... different colors of the same things, though. Please, to come back okay. soon. So, is it gonna make me play as Ryan instead of... Because Ryan was the first one in the party there? Yes, yes it is. Alrighty! Time to rumble, man! Oh, is this gonna be at level two? It's crushing time! It I'm is! Ready. Okay. And they have specific, uh... Interesting. Okay. Never played as Ryan before, but... Well, it looks like I might... Unless I just haven't updated his stuff, I might still have all my abilities, at least. As specific. Got it. There are a specific number of Not arts bad. that it's set up for me. Nice okay, got one. it. That's it, everyone. Let's go. Not long now. I wonder if it also has the um okay my turn affinities determined by the uh that <laughs> just murder that fucking bunny in your face we did it Eat this what Ryan? don't worry about it cheers now it's right time 
Okay. That's a lot of, uh, at level, everything set up for you. Very sp oh, okay. Okay. Yay! Here is little something. Oh, did I get all of them technically still? Okay. So is this? Well, they're for a different character at least. Yeah, they're just different colored ones. Hmm. I'd probably be much more up for those restricted time attack ones if I actually if you could like uh if I could pick which person I was playing as. Yeah, I think that's just where I am with those. Greetings. So. A. I could play. Sh I'm guessing they're having me play as the characters that we get uh, the aesthetics for, basically. Third wheel. Is that what the yeah, that's what the other one was called too. Okay. Maybe another time. So, ooh, actually, could I change? No, I can just... I can sort of change, well, no, I can't change any of their setups. No, no, I can't, okay. It's not letting me, it just lets me look at what they have. No, okay, I don't think I'm too, too, too interested in that specifically. What do you got for items, though? Choose. Ooh, that is quite a lot of stuff. Interesting. Does this work the same way in that if I save and I buy... Oh, I can't save here at least. If I save, buy them, and then reload, do I... Maybe that's why they don't let me save inside. Maybe that's related to it. If I save, buy, reload, will it, uh... Will it still keep the aesthetics ones, at least? Come again. So, that is indeed new. Power Legacy. Interesting. Okay. Now if I load... Does it actually work for this specific store? Could I just get all that sort of stuff that I want to get from it? Because I'm re I really only care about the aesthetic parts. Uh, it looks like yes. Technically, yes. Cool. Orion Legacy. <laughs> like I said, Shulk has some ugly ass. A lot of his stuff is just bad looking. It's like objectively even. Oh, that's neat. I actually like that. What's the normal power one? Is that the one with the, uh... No, that's just that. Hmm, I actually sort of like that less. What was the, uh, the visor one I liked? S uh, F speed cowling. Yeah, that's pretty cool too. Hers. <laughs> what the hell? What? Why are those so humongous? Why did they think that was a good idea? What? Interesting. Very interesting. Very. In it's interesting seeing these legacy ones, and it's like, what? Like they're like they look familiar, even. But at the same time, they so don't. Yeah. Like so. That just looks like a worse looking version. Yeah, like that just... It's just bulkier. Like they streamline this one a little bit. So some of them they just streamline them, some of them they just uh, redesigned entirely. Like Orion, I have the normal Orion. That also has it. Yeah. 
I I'll say it again, some of these I think look incredibly dumb, and it's just like, why would you ever actually want that on your character? <laughs> Basically. I'm still incredibly confused by her Orion one. I'm pretty sure this is the case for the the one here, too. Where, yeah, it's, it's just random red hair with a completely different hairstyle. It's so random. Uh. Uh, so. Yes? I did come across this, Tear of the Sky. Yeah, I, I had been up there for some time. So, no worry about that. Oh, this is actually a quest line. Yes. One more favor. Sure, why not? There's no way I can go all the way up there to give it to her. She's at Mechanosphere, way over there in the distance. You know what I'm going to ask, right? Sure, why not? Uh, so, in the same train of mine as what's going on here, I did do some stuff in between all the uh, episodes where basically... Uh, uh, I did, did, did try to get the stuff for, uh, level four, and, uh, I'm gonna know Rainbow Slug was a pain in the fucking butt in the same way the Ice Cabbage was. I basically had to use a similar, uh, tactic on that. And then when I went to look up where the Salua cell items were, apparently they're in, uh, inner Bionis stuff, so we know there's an area there, so either there's some hidden way to get into whatever that dungeon is that I need to find, or it's somewhere later in the story. Maybe. So, I, I was gonna try to finish that, but it seems like I'm actively blocked at the moment, or unaware. Which is completely possible, too. Oh, are you the guy? Oh, because I was trading with this person as part of trying to get all that stuff, and... Me. She was talking about having a boyfriend, and oh, you must be. You, uh, that must be you. That's the girl, and he's the. Okay, cool. Interesting. I did not anticipate that at the very least. You know, sure, I I'll do this freaking quest. Let's go. So you want to your special boots? Can you really make boots? That's a good hobby. Do you need boots? Magna boots. Interesting. Looking forward to seeing them. Where can we get the materials? Good thing I have tons of those already. <laughs> uh. Cool. Got all of them. I did get the affinity for Hidden Village just through doing stuff up to four. I think I was just about there. I had to, like, just go finish another quest or two. Which was part of the, uh, method I was going about actually trading with her for stuff, because you had to be at affinity four to get what you wanted, really. M10... M M100 Greaves. Oh, so those are the boots. I can feel myself getting stronger. Uh, one... Nope, no more quests from her. That's fine. M100 Grease. Uh, it's something we already have, basically. Got it. Something else I wanna do. If I can. Can I? Yeah, I can. Okay, let's go. I don't want anyone dying out there. Display no mercy. So. Oh, wow, all of you are dead. Why are all of you dead already? What did you guys get hit with? That just like killed you right off the bat. So I was told that the Titan stamp and stuff shouldn't. Is it that like flamethrower thing? It might be that flamethrower thing. Hold! Take me lightly at your peril. Yeah, it's that flamethrower thing. Oh, 
I don't know. What? Summon wind! I'm not gonna I can't. summon cotton! My life is getting hotter. Raise our wind! I can't. Yeah, <laughs> if I went complete defensive on that, then it becomes, yeah, yeah, that does become a bit really easy when you go completely defensive. Oh boy, okay. Well, that works. <laughs> that worked at the very least. It did feel a little bit like I was cheesing it, but it was a matter of just trying to keep everyone from... So. I had Fiora to try to be the tank, and she mostly was the tank. Shulk, I was, if you didn't notice, I was entirely not using as an attacker. I was using entirely for auto attacks and Monado arts. And Charlotte's just there to keep people alive and make sure she can attack from a distance so she doesn't jump down, because I was trying it with Ricky before, hoping to use his high amount of uh, HP to make it work. And he just jumped down to the ground down here at a point. There was a point where he just decided that was a thing. And it looked like Fiora was about to do that at a point. So I was like, oh, no, 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 no. Come back to me. Come back to me. Come back to me. Uh, Garter 3. Okay. Nothing new, though. Uh, Stx wise. But okay. Yeah, that worked. Well. Uh, time to move forward, basically. I think I've done my fill of random other stuff. That I wanted to do for now.
Okay. Probably a good place to, uh... Save unless it pushes me through it. No. It's him. Oh, I, I basically forgot about him. Gato! That's the second time I've sensed an attack without seeing a vision first. Your mastery of the Monado is really astonishing. Was that the implication you before? Cannot be permitted to live. Gado, stop! Why are you fighting us? Remember who you are! It's no good! He's completely under Egil's control now! Remember what Vanea told us! I can't believe it! I won't believe it! Gado, please! Answer me! Yeah, we don't have much choice. Nope, let's just go. Beings of Bionic! You and the Monado! Oh, wow. Okay. Turn him away. Shut down! You okay? You got it! Double wind! Your history! ECS! Mo Sixty-eight. Okay, I'm still around level. Okay, what is he? What are you doing? Oh, ow! Yep, yeah, that hurt. Oh no. Yeah, I was about to ask him to heal. He already healed me, so let's double heal. Uh. Oh, was that enough? That didn't take much. How can you lay a hand on Sharla? You're supposed to love her! Marry her even! I don't know or care. It changes nothing. No! You always protected me and Juju. This isn't you. I said I don't know you. I have been granted this body of steel so that Egil's will may be done. This body feels great. Its movement is so precise. We are unstoppable, for we are one. Perfect in body and mind. You don't have to do this. Look at Fiora. She found herself again. Wherever you are, you must still feel pain. Absurd. Well then finish us off. Charla and all. We all saw you miss a second ago. Ain't you supposed to be a crack shot? <laughs> or did that pile of junk you call a body mess up your aim, eh? Shut your mouth! He's hesitating then, isn't he? Got it. an idiot. That was your last chance. He's not giving up. The stories about Gado of Colony 6 are true. Except, he still can't kill her. He's missing Sharla on purpose. Oh, do I need to put Sharla in my party? Gado. Have her tank. You're just like I was. You can remember who you are. Gado, please! Don't you remember me? It's Sharla! Wither and die as all life on Bionis will! Feel our wrath! He's a lot more opinionated than last time. Shulk. Can you still use the Monado? Fiora? No. You're... Even after losing all living flesh, Aham's heart will remain. It is still present within this face. Is that true? Yes. It is clear from his actions towards you. The remnants of his heart. 
pull him back. Gatto! I will break the curse that allows Egil to control the faces. I need you to buy me some time. Okay. We'll try. Ryan, we've got to help Fiora. Hey, Come on! Right! Okay. Same part. Got it. Oh, he summoned stuff. Okay, let's uh, get all those guys. Oh, I forgot to change your stuff back. Ah, come on! Ah, I wanted the chain, but oh well. I, forgot, I need to change uh, Melia's last suit back to what I wanted. Oh, fuck, there's another one? That was unexpected. Did he resist the oh I keep messing up on those, my bad. Oh wow. Okay, I shouldn't have done that. Whatever, I guess. I guess he'll. She's releasing something through that, uh, area that Shulk tried to sort of take off before. Fiora? Was that you, or...? Mm. As for him, he'll be fine. Don't worry. Forgive me, Shana. I... It's okay. It's all right now. I'm just so happy to have you back. While I was under his control, I, I realized something. Egil once wished only to break the circle of suffering. And is now causing it? He believed that 
If blood is spilt now, a new world will be born. But something terrible happened. And now... Now, he is consumed with vengeance. Egil. Go! Get out of here! Stop them doing what they did to me! To anyone else! I promise I'll be back for you. Until then, stay safe. Is he gonna be okay? He still has his whole immune system compromised, right? Drink it. You must be thirsty. Thanks. Don't go dying on us. After we take Egil down, we'll get you looked at. You don't look like any doctor I've ever seen. I know a good doctor nearby. She is Machina, though. <laughs> It'll do. I'll be right here. Hey, kid. What's your name? Ryan. Do me a favor, Ryan. Take care of Sharla. <sighs> Is he actually going to survive long enough? Fiora's, I sub, is Fiora seemed pretty out of it pretty quickly, back when she was removed from her ability. I suppose he still has that, uh, the face still there, if that can help. Sia, what is it? I have an unpleasant feeling. A vision? No. But something is not right. The Mekon are neither attacking nor defending. It is as if they abandoned the fight as soon as it began. Impossible. This is a key strategic position. They would never abandon it. Perhaps they have forces hidden on Mekonis. But... Hidden forces? Didn't the fortress already get... Could it be? Fucked up? Your Highness, Shulk and the others are in danger. Will you grant me the use of a Havrez? You intend to aid them? I need you here! I did not have a vision, but nevertheless, I can sense something. The Mechonis is awakening. Interesting. Okay. Is that why they're abandoning it? The sword's about to move. New art learn. Okay, I... New art. I'm sort of disappointed that she hasn't had stuff that's actually... Oh, it's topple-driven? Hmm. Okay. Requires very high attention. I could see the advantage there. I'm gonna guess I didn't change her spice stuff back. Okay, that explains some of the other stuff. I didn't have haste or the uh, higher agility that I wanted on her either. Whoopsie daddle. I didn't have a. Uh, I forgot to change things back from special set. That's why I don't... That's why I wish there was, like, some way you could have, like, sets that you could just, like, swap between. Like, you have this set up for this specific strategy. That sort of thing instead. And you have your standard one, and et cetera, et cetera. I suppose while we're here, probably not a horrible time to discuss some of my thoughts. So, I did have... I, I did write down some stuff, because it felt like we were coming to a climax. I did write down some stuff speculation wise so honestly I don't think I have just like a theory as to what's going on I think we've gotten to the point that we're uh everything's complicated enough that it's not really there's no really satisfactory just like theory as to what what is happening um, unless I like went back and tried to scan like everything and then write it down and try to do something like that there's just too much for me to just wrap my head around at any given time so there's two ways I wanted to approach it as a result of that. One, I wanted to look back at some of the other things that have been brought up that feel like they haven't been answered. They haven't really been addressed. Right? Uh, and have some thoughts about what this might be. Okay, so in FYI, this might be a long one, because I actually have quite a few things to talk about, and I might ramble quite a bit. 
<laughs> so those of you who like to hear me speculate on stuff, which quite a few of you have said as much, this is it. This is probably the big one before Climax is truly properly start. Uh, one of them is the Mechanist Leg Wounds. So I actually ended up, as part of doing this, I went back and watched the very beginning scene. Like, the beginning monologue that I believe Shulk had when he was talking about them fighting. And why is there a leg wound? Yeah? Doesn't that not make sense? If you think about it. Because there doesn't seem to be any indication of this of him of the Mechanus getting hit on the leg. I suppose it could happen at some point, but throughout all the fights that we've seen, I don't remember anything that involved the legs even being targeted, let alone attacked. So that's just an unknown question. So I suppose that could come from maybe that came before or something like that. And and that's actually one of my thoughts. Uh, once I get to the after the unanswered questions, how to approach it. Uh, another thing is it is it just me or does the ocean seem awfully shallow? I'm not saying the Mechanis and Bionis are short, but they're actually fairly low to the uh, ground. They, they like come out of the water quite a bit for an ocean. Oceans should be really deep, typically. Yet it seems like it's probably maybe the size of like a. A, like a tall building or something almost then you have the fact that the arm itself was able to like collect up sand to the point from the ocean floor to basically create an island rather than just sinking into the ocean i know they're big man but still it seems awfully shallow oceans are deep they are uh this was a note i made from uh when editing some of the last few episodes so i guess my thought on the last one for it being shallow is that that's really weird it feels like something that could easily not be explained and it's really just for aesthetics and setting up what they want to for the world but it's still a little weird that it could mean something what i don't know uh in my experience of this game if something means something it usually means that uh come on melly you can catch up you can catch up <laughs> it usually seems to mean basically if it means something, if it if there's actually a meaning behind it that you can take from it, it involves what we've been told not being true in some form. <laughs> uh, the High Entia appeared humanoid, much like Melia does, and how we see them in the flashback. From uh, the flashback for when everything got attacked and whatnot. And they were, like, doing dealings with Zanza and such. So that at the very least, it appears that the High Entia were in humanoid, humanoid form at that point, at the very least. We did seem to get the implication before that they are bred uh, from the Telethia, sort of, or something akin to the Telethia, uh, way back when, when they weren't humanoid at all. So that's interesting. Uh, I will say some of these things that I've mentioned, uh, the explanation in my head would immediately go to the idea that there's a much longer history before this battle between two of them. Obviously, there are civilizations set up at that point, so... It's not like things... Everyone just showed up at once from each of theirs, and then they started talking like, Okay, no, let's fight. Or anything like that. Um... The other Shulk that we keep seeing in those flashbacks, it's the weirdest thing. My best guess at that is that that's Zanza in some form. Maybe trying to take over Shulk's body, maybe. That, that's my best guess as to that. And he's doing it by basically introducing himself in Shulk's mind as another version of Shulk or something like that. So that there's a, a way to like naturally proceed to having the identity taken over by Zanza or something like that. Um, another thing is the freaking Minato. I talked about this last time in terms of the nature of it. I don't think I'm going to go into too much more detail, but... In relation to that, there is a, a lot of stuff on both sides, the Bionis and the Mechanis, where we see a bunch of motherfucking things that look like they're based, like they have the same sort of Monado shape, right? Where it's that like open, sort of like half circle going into like a pincer claw sort of thing. And it like opens up and stuff like that. And they really remind me of the Monado on both sides. And you see them on both sides too. So you sort of got to think that maybe possibly some of the origin of this technology 
at least the technology, if not more, comes from the same place, yeah? Maybe the Monado is, like, legitimately a god in this world and it was worshipped at some point and that's the reason. The same reason why you see dragons and stuff like that in multiple cultures across the world. Where it's just something that's, uh, maybe not based on reality, but it's common to the imagination of the people. Just because of the, na uh, the, like, trying to explain things in the world. People come to some of the same conclusions, that sort of thing. Uh... Or, alternatively, there could be a hidden history well before that where maybe everyone was the same civilization at some point. Uh... <laughs> oh, this is the big one of unanswered questions that I wrote down just thinking about it lately. The fucking colonies! I brought this up ages ago! Ages ago! Ages, 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 ages ago. They're colonies. What are they colonies from? It's not over on the Mekanis, it seems like. Unless we, like, stumble upon... It seems like there's, like, a singular city. And it's sure not a colony. Everything else doesn't seem like a city. They're factories or something else like that. Right? There's not like there's multiple civilizations here. There's just one big city. <laughs> that, like, my original attempt to explain that was like, Oh, the Homs came from uh, the Mekanis and... Uh... <laughs> That's why, or something like that. that. That's why there are colonies. And I almost wonder if you, like, like, what would happen if you asked any of these, um, civilians, Fiora, Sho, Dunman, Ryan, hey, why is it called a colony? What's a colony? Like, and they're just like, well, that's just what the place is named, Colony you know, 9. And it's like, but a colony means something, right? It means you came from somewhere. A colony is relative to... Because, like, a colony itself isn't an actual, just, like, soul power controlling itself. It's an offshoot of another power, politically and uh, through governing and whatnot, right? And it, I wonder how they would answer if someone just asked them that, like, why is it called a colony? Why are there nine of them? I wonder if the answer would be something like, well, it's just called Colony 9. That's the name of it, and it's like, but it's a colony. Colony has mean. And then the response to that could be something along the lines, well, you have a bunch of, like, uh, cities out there on Earth that are called, like, River something. They're not an actual river. Maybe they're near a river or something like that. You have stuff that are based on saints and mountains, and they're called new versions of other things. Like, a lot of those don't actually have meaning, and they don't actually mean anything. They're just names. Some of them do. But... <laughs> I, I'm just wondering how that would go. We still don't have a fucking explanation for that, basically. And it's the thing that perplexes me the most, I think, out of everything, is that there's these fucking colonies that are sitting there. The one thing I can think of that gives a real legitimate hint is that quite a few of the colonies, between being located on a uh, the thigh, basically, and then being located on what seemed to basically be, like, a part of the leg that would easily be moved around and disturbed, essentially, if, um, if it was moved between the two colonies we are aware of. They're set up in places that seem basically to assume the Bionis wouldn't move again. So they seem very likely to post-date the whole, like, fall of the Bionis and Mechanis and their fight and stuff like that. Right? It seems like that. That seems like a fairly safe bet at this point. And we can add to that, there's a whole ship that they had that they took uh, uh, either out of, right? That was there, and it was embedded into stuff. So either... And the sort of assumption I'm basing this on is the idea that it's probably connected to um, however they established the colony originally. So... And there was a point where I was like, well, maybe they came from the higher of sea and that whole place because they have the, they had that same uh, uh, machine there. But you also see, a, like I was saying before, a bunch of uh, uh, Monado looking shit in that shape over here, too. So it's like, does that actually matter? You could say that the colony or whatever it was probably maybe has the same origin of whatever history it has as, say, over in... Uh, uh, in the Air of Sea, as well as here on the Mechanis at some point. Just for some reason, it post-states all that stuff going down. And the Homs are basically a new entity, maybe? Maybe the Homs as a whole are a new entity to the entirety of this, and they post their involvement on, uh, 
either of these places post-date everything there. Maybe. Maybe there's a... And this sort of relates to the other things. So, let's let's establish this first. So, the other thing that I was going to talk about outside of um, uh, things that I remember off the top of my head that seem unanswered and really haven't been notably hinted at. There's a lot of things that have been unanswered, but they're like sort of hinting like, oh, I'm giving you a quarter of the story and stuff like that. But it feels like some of these, most of these things just like they haven't touched. Uh, the other things is I've noticed a lot of the, um, <laughs> it's daytime already, went through the entire night. Uh, <laughs> um, so a lot of the twists so far feel like they take some of our base assumptions. So there are two ways you can sort of develop a world and there are two extremes. You could have something extremely realistic. Basically it's a real world game. Maybe with some tweaks to the rules of how things work. Add in a little magic here, maybe. So something that just, like, changes it a little bit to make it a unique world rather than the real world. Or you could just have the real world. But from a writing speculation perspective, that sort of thing, you have a very... <clears throat> you have that sort of thing. And you have a very established set of rules of how everything works and how it should work. Right? On the other hand, on the other extreme... You can have a world, and it might even be based in the real world, technically, but the actual rules of the world are open-ended. Uh, I think a good example from the games I've played that sort of strikes me this way is the Fate series. I played Fate Stay Night on the channel. And while I wouldn't say that it lacks rules, my biggest impression of how the rules of that world work are open-ended enough that basically the writers, when they say, hey, I want to do this, you just can, you can make it work. It's not really something, it's not like a strict set of rules that the story is born out of. It's a story that defines the rules, and you keep it open-ended enough that it just is whatever it is as you reveal it. And you can't really speculate on that, because you're just guessing in the dark at that point. I feel like Xenoblade, and most of the stuff I quite like in terms of just like lore and world building and whatnot, fall in the middle between those two where you have a strong set of rules, but it's unique enough, where it's just, it's not really the real world rules, it's just an entirely new definition of how the world works, but it's a set of rules that births the story out of it, and births how the world works and how people work. Maybe it started with like, oh, we want to, you know, we, we want a sword that can tell the future, and I'm guessing that's how this story started, uh, when they started writing it. But you still have an established set of rules, and then everything else is born out of it. That sort of idea. Uh, which is the most fun to speculate on, and it's why I've enjoyed speculating on this as much as I had, uh, I have throughout this Let's Play. Uh, and where am I going with this, you might be asking. So if you have an established set of rules, and you have a world that isn't so much based on the real one, there's a few ways you can approach speculation, and... Ultimately, plot twists themselves are based on setting up expectations, which is the same way speculation will be born. If you think about things and you speculate shit, ultimately what you're doing is you're taking the information you're told and you try to fill in the blanks. Expectations are sort of a more committed form of speculation in ways, where it's not necessarily a situation where you're uh, just saying like, well, it could be that. Or that sort of thing, and you're just thinking like, hmm, I wonder. It's more like, well, that's what I think it is. And it's sort of a combination of, uh, in terms of storytelling, how I see it, it's sort of a combination of speculation and expectation. Where expectations are the things you assume to be true. They're the things that you assume will happen, have happened, how the rules work. And things slowly transfer from speculation into expectation. So if you have a world in the middle of those two extremes, where you have a new set of rules, your expectations are pretty wiped away. Everything is new, everything is something that you gotta learn sort of from scratch. There's some basis from reality and stuff like that, like momentum and other random physics stuff that it would be ridiculous if they just completely threw out and stuff like that. You know, basics, human language, stuff like that. Uh, but there's a whole new set of rules that you have to introduce and in this game, what they did was at the beginning, they introduced a set of base assumptions that you create, not speculation, but they're your expectations of how things are and how they should be. And what the game has done, and if, so if you look back on those uh, base assumptions that you started with, what you really have is you have, um, uh, 
I believe the opening monologue basically establishes it as, like, the world is an endless ocean. Nothing was there. The Bionis and became things. They fought. They died. Civilizations grew up on this, and then they started fighting, right? And basically every single plot twist, Fiora being alive, uh, the Mechon, maybe not being as evil and stuff like that, have been taking some of those base expectations from the very beginning rather than speculation, uh, and flipping them on their heads. And one of the reasons I think he's done a good job at plot twists and stuff like that in this so far is that rather than necessarily telling you this is exactly how the world works, it sort of sets you up and gives you a basic fundamentals of, well, this is the basic idea of what this world is, and lets you sort of start gravitating towards speculating on things beyond that. And then he goes back to those expectations and flips them a bit over time. So my point here being is that there's a few of those base assumptions from back at the beginning that we haven't flipped on their head yet. And if I were to go out on a limb and speculate shit and try to, you know, predict theories in terms of what might happen in this, um, based on that, that would probably be my best avenue for trying to predict things if I wanted to hopefully do something accurate from just a storytelling perspective. Uh, the two notable things that really strike me is not being contradicted yet is uh, one, and let's start with this because it relates to some of the stuff I was leading from before, that everything started with the Bionis and the Mechanis. Yeah? So, just assume, throw all that out. It feels like we're getting to the point that that's unlikely to be the case, considering the fight between them seems to have had the civilizations established and probably a long history already established well before that happened. So, uh... That seems very unlikely, so possibilities for that. Maybe there are more giants. Maybe the colonies are from a different giant that came around and just, you know, maybe they found them completely fucked up and they're like, oh, okay, we can use that as land or something like that. And maybe they'll come back at the end on just, like, another giant thing. Like the like a giant human or something like that. With a giant dick just waving. <laughs> what am I saying? Oh, my goodness. Uh, and the giant human just has, yeah, yeah, it has its stick waving. And it's like, hey, how's the colonies going? Wait, you only have two of the nine left? What happened? It's only been like 5,000 years or something. My goodness. <laughs> uh, so maybe stuff like that. Uh, and then the other one was like an endless ocean. Which sort of ties into why it seems so weird that the ocean's so... Shallow. If you have that shallow of an ocean, I'm very, very doubtful that you would have an actual proper endless ocean, for one. You'd almost definitely have actual land and islands being formed and stuff like that, yeah? There's a lot of ways islands can form, and I'm not an expert enough to tell you how, but shallow oceans and just strike me as very, very susceptible to having the ground from beneath the ocean surface risen to a level that it would turn into actual above ocean land. So, through any of the methods, basically. That's just asking for that to happen over time. So, those are the two things, and I guess if I had to make a prediction off of that, I'd say... Uh, we just don't know of anything else. There's probably an entire world out there. Maybe, and maybe that's where the colonies came from. Or something like that. So, two predictions. There's a giant, there's a giant Bionis Mechanis sized human walking around naked with its dick flapping. Um, you know, it's a Nintendo game. Anything could happen. Uh, <laughs> or maybe there's a whole world out there that, um, uh, we just don't know about. And we've just been cut off from history and we don't know anything about it. That sort of thing. And we're just colonies that were sort of abandoned. At a point. Maybe. Maybe abandoned. Well... That's my speculation. How long did I spend on that? I have no idea, but I'm about two hours into recording, so... Uh, we feel like we're about to hit a climax, so I figured it would be a good time to just, you know, double down on that. 